All right, and I am back. For more Pikmin 3 Deluxe, I'm going to be reading um, the Piclopedia entries uh, that I have missed, which is Olimar and Louis' notes. I copied this save file here to do some other stuff to get badges and whatnot. I'm going to be going back into the ultra spicy original file. I'm going to start reading Olimar and Louis' notes. And also, when this goes up on YouTube, it'll probably probably be Olimar and Louis' notes combined with 100% completion as well. So let's... Ugh, let's get started. Uh, Copad. So we have all of these enemies. Uh, I'm going to make sure to do Plasm Wraith last. Because uh, everything's out of complete order. I really, really wish there was like a way to sort this stuff. But there is no way to sort any of this stuff. So, <coughs> I've already read everyone else's stuff in here. Oh, I want to go here. I guess, oh, what button do I press? Okay, I guess you just do that. All right, let us begin. I actually want to make the face game a little bit smaller. All right, let's begin. Shergrub family, female. Hamegia Mandibus, female. Mandablard family. Hello, Scout. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're going to be doing Olimar's first, and then uh, Louis' uh, after Olimar's. It's not really early. I'm 20 minutes early-ish. 25 minutes early. I want to read this because it's going to take a little bit, and I'll do some stuff after. I still need to get 100%, so I'll start working toward that again, and then we'll swap games. Uh, but for when this goes up on YouTube, it's just going to be all this stuff. The males of this species are uh, purple and black creatures with tapered mouths, while the females are lighter in color and lack an armored exoskeleton. As with most Mandiblards, these creatures have regressed to the point where they have lost both legs and wings. They can be seen crawling around on the ground and are beloved, uh, believed, not beloved, believed to feed on the vegetable extracts from the congealed fluids of expired Pikmin. <coughs> Gross. For, un for an unforgivable uh, quiche, slice this creature up with a mix of four eggs, two vine-ripened uh, tomatoes, diced zucchini, and generous handfuls of feta and Swiss feta and Swiss cheese. Bake until crust crusty and golden. This beast is most flavorful if caught and cooked just after laying its eggs. <laughs> Louis is once again a savage. Uh, I keep pressing the wrong button. Dwarf Bulborb. It, he does say Breadbug Family still. He, does, he still does say Breadbug Family. Confirmed Breadbugs are in Pikmin 3, just not in the way you expect. Although initially identified as uh, a juvenile Bulborb, groundbreaking new research indicates that this creature is in fact a member of the Breadbug Family. A close relative of the vanilla Breadbug, it escapes uh, predation through mimicry. Unique adaptation from the Bulborb's crimson coloration allows the species to safely uh, commingle. Uh, such effective adaptation and uh, obfuscation, uh, ob yeah, obfuscation <laughs> by a prey species is rare, indicating this clever creature is a master of mimicry. <laughs> Shall we, the Nintendo? I know they're there. We want to see bread bugs. We want to see HD bread bugs. The only enemy in Pikmin 4 only needs to be a bread bug. For a blissful, uh, bisque mince, uh, the entire beast finely and stir with heavy cream, artichoke, artichoke hearts, and a pinch of black pepper. Heat slowly until piping hot. Mmm, rich and creamy. <laughs> it is so nice to see this again. Also, actually, I'm gonna move, uh, I'm gonna move the face cam. It's gonna be weird. Actually, do I want to do that? I just want to show you how many I've killed. You don't really need to see the, uh the um the habitat it's in you know what habitat it's in but i just want to show you how many i've killed throughout all the all the stuff i've done in the game so far <laughs> uh bullborb grub dog family this large organism has a familiar has the familiar mandibles and uh cranial morphology of the grub dog family as well as the characteristic characteristic bulging eyes as with most grub dogs 
Uh, the creature's cranium comp uh, comprises half of its total length and girth, showing a scar scarlet abdomen with white spots. This creature is primarily noc nocturnal, and choosing to prey upon smaller creatures uh, returning to their nests, originally classified as the spotty bulborb. Uh, further research has reclassified the species as a basic bulborb. Uh, subspecies of varied colors have recently been discovered, but the uh, academics are divided into two rival camps over how to handle their classification. That's right, they were called spotty bulborbs. Uh, in, I guess, Pikmin 2, or, Pik or Pikmin 1 or 2, maybe just both, uh, but these are just ball borbs now. Plump specimens are best split, uh, spit, ro spit, spit roasted whole, stuffed with a lime and a slab of bacon, based frequently to ensure a magnificently moist haunch. Hello, Pikmin, welcome to the stream. I am reading Piclopedia, the final Piclopedia. White Spectralids, Flutterbee family. It's remarkably similar to its unmarked brethren, but the telltale wing patterns is a lone uh, wing patterns a and a lone pair of hind legs give it away. It sticks its own uh, sticks to its own habitat for the most part, though it may fly away to reach uh, a flower or escape a ball blacks. You're gonna mention ball blacks in your in your in your entry, Mr. Olimar? I was so hoping that uh, the final boss of the... I don't think I mentioned it before, but I was really hoping the final boss of the epilogue would be Emperor Bulblax. Because Emperor Bulblax, fun fact, is still in the game files and unused. It has several animations, and I'm pretty sure it's like fully HDified for this game. It's just an unused enemy in Pikmin 3. It's been unused for over seven years. So... It will soon return to its home. Well, the white variety gathers no nectar, uh, but some sometimes may be found carrying a pellet. Remove the wings and drop straight into a deep fryer. Cook until golden or until the uh, enticing aroma starts to sting your eyes. Serve immediately. But I'm really curious to see Olimar's notes on the new enemies for this game. Medusal Slucker. Slucker. Shrad... Sh um, Blada. Emblada family? Emblada family? Most of its body is translucent and gelatinous. It drifts on the wind using uh, the puff stalk on its head and captures um, the passerby uh, below its adhe adhesive manbrium. The purpose of this behavior is unknown, as examining its examining its catches reveal no trace of saliva or uh, gastric fluid on them. Unlike most aquatic jellyfish, uh, it has no tentacles or <sighs> nematocysts, making it safe to handle. It might even be safe to ride, opening up uh, opening up exciting new transportation possibilities. I mean, in mission mode, you do see Louie inside one, so... <clears throat> Makes for a tangy and fresh sorbet. Place in the freezer for two hours until or until firm. Garnish with a slice of uh, candied lemon before serving. Sounds delicious. Armored Maudad. Uh, Turbersilorex Maudad family. It makes its home inside the hollow stumps of enormous trees. The name is derived from uh, the hard shell covering its entire body. As it grows, it can only molt its shell uh, by slamming into rock uh, rock walls to shatter it uh, before forming a new one. It has a uh, vero ferocious, that is the word ferocious, it's weird seeing it spelled out, ferocious appetite and doesn't hesitate to eat anything that, th that it sees. Uh, the contents of its stomach are often a surprise. Best enjoyed fresh. If the legs aren't twitching when you put it on the grill, don't bother. <laughs> Louis is, once again, savage. <laughs> Fiery Blowhog. This creature expels a volatile phosphor, uh, a phosphorus compound from its snout that combusts upon contact with air. Its fi this fire-breathing ability is dependent upon the air-to-fuel ratio in its mouth. 
uh, catalyst reaction uh, with the expelled compound and purification of the compound. Thus, it is highly unlikely such a complex process could cause the, the spontaneous explosion of a fallen blowhog. This process is also perhaps to avoid risk of spontaneous combustion in the belly of a live specimen. Roast this flavorful beast for several hours, letting it, uh, letting it stew uh, in its own succulent juices. Don't worry about overcooking this beast. It's scorch-proof. Scutterchuck. Hyrodiscalis crystalism. Hevel. Hevel family. Its main uh, uh, offensive strategy is to launch uh, the crystal it carries on its back. Otherwise, it's completely defenseless. In most circumstances, it's a peaceful herbivore whose diet consists of prima uh, primarily of mo consists primarily of moss. When in danger, however, it wastes no time def uh, defending its territory by breaking small rocks and hurling them at, a th at the threat. In order to ensure it has a steady supply of rocks uh, with, uh, with which to defend itself, it shares its habitat with calcified crush blat larvae. Okay, so it can, uh, it can make use of the shells they cast off each night. That's interesting. Are the are the rocks it throws calcified crushed blat larva? That's an interesting s statement he just made. An acquired taste, but quite but really uh quite addictive once you get used to it. No special preparation necessary. You just you just eat it raw, I guess. Yellow Wallywog. This magnificent specimen has the brightest gold coloration and the greatest number of uh lateral spots of many of any members of its of the Amphitubor family. Uh, this specimen seems to have lost some swimming uh, proficiency with the evolutionary adaptation that granted it a greater jumping ability. The Amphitubor habitats uh, aquatic uh, habitats aquatic shallows and uh, shows an instinctive di uh, drive to jump upon and squash smaller creatures. <laughs> yeah, in I'm pretty sure in all other versions that's not America, it's Wally Hop because the word wog is a derogatory term, apparently. I found that out when I was streaming Pikmin 3 a couple months ago. Actually, no, I found it out. I was watching a video and someone got, like, the yellow Wally Wog spirit in Smash Ultimate and it said yellow Wally Hop. And I'm like, that's not the name of it. Why is it called that? And then I looked it up. I was like, oh... Beer? I look over and see the word beer in my Pikmin game? Beer batter and deep fry uh, for a down-home flavor you won't soon forget. I Skitter Leaf. The Skitter Leaf is a, rel is a relative of the Pond Skater that uh, shed its wings and adapted uh, to life on the ground with no uh, residual traits of its airborne past, the skitter leaf can neither fly nor skit across the surface of the water. The wings have since evolved into the leaf-like structure on its back, which serves uh, to hide the skitter leaf through mimicry. It appears quite eff effective, as few predators can see through this clever disguise. It, how is it said I only killed one? I've definitely not only killed one skitter leaf. That is, that's just a lie. The superb amalgamation of juicy meat and leafy greens uh, ensures that this skitter leaf will be the uh, will be the new spinach. <laughs> Just all right. <laughs> Swooping snitch bug. Uh, the scarpinids originally lived on the ground, sporting poorly developed uh, vesticle, ve vesi residual, ve. Vestical <laughs> wings. This species developed enlarged antenna that can be used as makeshift wings. Uh, scarp uh, scarpinids are attracted by the sight of large groups of Pikmin uh, in cavalry formation and will swoop down to seize them. However, uh, scarp uh, scarp just say stitch bug stitch bugs do not p eat Pikmin, and they will drop any seized Pikmin after the short time. The reason for this behavior is unknown, but I look forward to the future future research in the area. I mean, this is your, I guess, fourth time 
after the epilogue, coming to the planet. Like, you should probably know that by now. Remove the wings. Marinate a well, uh, marinate a well marbled steak for several hours in a chipotle marinade. Then, uh, carbro- a uh, charbroil to perfection. They also mentioned chipotle in here, which I know chipotle is like a type of food, or like a way you cook food, not just a restaurant, but... <laughs> Pyroclasmic sluice. Sluice. Sluice volcanus. Sluice family. Sluice family. A species of terrestrial uh, snail coat- a, of terrestrial snail coated in flammable a mucus instead of the traditional shell. Uh, the creature stays uh, lubricated through a constant secretion of mucus so that the fires never reach its skin. The most fascinating aspect of these creatures is the instinctive ability to avoid causing widespread fires by care uh, carelessly brushing plants. Neat! Delicious mucus! Remove tongue and discard the rest. Cook over a ch uh, charcoal grill until medium rare. So you, you just eat the pyroclasmic sluice's tongue. I Bearded Amphret. Porcellus bar number uh, numbus num numbus family. The hair covered its uh, covering its face works as a uh, capacitor. It charges electricity by rubbing the hair to build static. Then discharges it at enemies. Uh, intruding on its territory. It's more territorial, territorial uh, than aggressive, attacking only when threatened, uh, rather than hunt prey. It has several uh, qualities unique to, the, to this ecosystem, such as breastfeeding. <laughs> Man, Olimar is going super scientific. <laughs> I'm just not expecting to see these words. I don't remember seeing these words in Pikmin 2, like, like breastfeeding. <laughs> such as breastfeeding, it's young which may someday give rise to a whole new ta uh, taxonomy of fauna here. I mean, it makes sense. They're animals. They live on the planet. They do that. I mean, also on the model for the bearded Amphrat, you can literally see an asshole. So. Pan roast the thighs with uh, sprigs of rosemary and whole garlic cloves. Finish with a squeeze of fruit juice to highlight the subtle, uh, the subtle notes of of the lingering electricity. Arctic cannon larva. Uh, lit hop, lit, lit hopod family? Gr just, just whatever that said up top. They not hold back on these notes. Yeah, they went really scientific for these. <laughs> like, I, Olimar was kind of scientific with his, his classifications and Pikmin too, but never went this far, I don't think. Um, like other members of the uh, lithopod family, uh, its internal bacteria are sp uh, specialized to form ice compounds. I mean, I'm also not surprised with the text in this game when Brittany literally said that she wanted to make, um, like a spacesuit out of armored Maudad crystals and then be like, oh, people would just stare at my boobs because it's it's a translucent suit and people would be able to see my skin through it. <laughs> so, internal bacteria are specialized to form ice compounds, uh... Form ice compounds from ambient moisture, which then expels as projectiles. Oh, I'm gonna read that again. Internal bacteria are specialized to form ice compounds that form ambient moisture, which then expels as projectiles. So it just makes the snowballs in its body, which is kind of gross. Litho and their family is a direct reference to the rocks that they used to throw. I mean, there are still uh, rock-throwing cannon beetles in this game. It technically doesn't rely on cold temperatures to create it, this ice, which is formed by pressurized internal fluids that act as, as coolant. When the projectiles uh, rapidly expand, they absorb ambient heat, uh, lowering the air temperature enough for the moisture in the air to freeze. I love this stuff. Peel back the shell uh, and sprinkle the tender meat with a dash of salt before slurping it up raw. For a refreshing dessert, uh, pour fruit juice over its snowballs. You want to make snow cones out of its ice balls it makes in its stomach? Desiccated skitter leaf. 
Skittling family. Is that a different family? Hold on. Skittling family? Freaking. Okay, no, it is the same. I was like, wait a second. I don't remember seeing that. Uh, Russ Morphler. The Skittling, uh, the Skittling variant that resembles dead, uh, dead leaves. Excuse me. I love trying to read. Also, I love seeing all the Pikmin die. It's so cool. I just watched all the Pikmin die. I always lose Pikmin to get to those desiccated skitter leaves because I always forget they're there and I always forget they respawn. And I can't see them because they blend in with the environment. Uh, the Skitterling variant that resembles dead leaves. Its legs have developed in specific ways. The front claws uh, capture prey while the flat hind, hind legs are suited for running and swimming. Its highly tuned senses keep it uh, still for any creature. But Pikmin, once it gets its claws on its prey, it doesn't easily let go. Recent research has revealed that the, its camouflage has a second purpose beyond hunting. Scavengers are fooled by its disguise into carrying its eggs, thereby, thereby expanding the population. Don't expand the desiccated skitterleaf population. Go Make it go to extinction. I don't like them. <laughs> no preparation needed to enjoy this flavorful beast. Its natural crunch gives, a, gives way to an intriguing mouthfeel. Fosbat. Uh, Tectu Purvis Pterums. Aerodinthia family. This ver uh, this infant stage of the behemoth Fosbat has un underdeveloped wings and cannot fly yet. Or cannot yet fly. Uh, it is uh, Cyphalus from birth uh, to the point where even the low light uh, from a common glow cap or light bulb will cause it to vaporize. Uh, the chromophore excretions that the adult phosphat uses for camouflage are, over are overwhelming to its fragile infant form and cause apophysis uh, in excessive amounts. My own lamp does not trigger this reaction, possibly because its light is the wrong wavelength. Perfect ingredient for a hot pot for hot pot night. Add to the broth while no one's looking for best results. Man, I can't wait to throw that in the pot and then you open it up. Everyone else opens it up when it's all ready to cook and you just see the eyeballs floating in there. It's, it's great. Fossbat pot. Fossbat pod. Fossbat sack. What is it called, Nintendo? <laughs> what is it called? Uh, and then whatever those words are. The Hebeth Fosbat's egg sacs are, are uh, fa found affixed to surfaces around its lair. Each sac spawns roughly five baby Fosbats, uh, stopping when enough uh, are, are in the air to trigger its automatic re uh, response. This keeps the population uh, density of Fosbats in any given cave uh, at a suitable level, which is important given the limited supply of food available in its habitat. BRB, you're gonna make some corn dogs? Yo, make some corn dogs out of some phosphat pods. You can slurp up the beast's eggs right from it the shell with a sweet and velvety texture. They melt in your mouth. Thank you, Louie. Behemoth Fosbat. It's forced to live in darkness due to the extreme uh, photosensitivity Due to extreme photosensitivity, the specialized uh, crumb of forbs on its skin can absorb faint light sources to turn completely transparent. Its wings and spines are covered in mildly toxic scales that paralyze small insects. Well, I'm trying to like read and like hiccuping and burping and whatnot. Uh, until it can uh, inhale them with a powerful vortex. Often, uh, often creatures that involve in darkness have. Uh, Atrophied eyes and uh, albinism. Albinism? Albinism? Uh, but that uh, is not notab- uh, But that is notably not uh, the case. It does, however, share the tendency to only venture out at night uh, with other cave dwellers. Lightly bred and fry hole, slather a brioche uh, bun with remelid. Then top with fried beast, 
uh, and a handful of argula. Serve with a lemon wedge. I don't know what any of those things mean other than lemon wedge. <laughs> Whip tongue, bulbo herb. Oculus longingua. Grub dog family. Instead of uh, the gnashing jaws usually found in uh, related species, uh, it uses its extensive, uh, extendable, ex no, extens, extensible, extensible, vicious tongue to capture prey. Even before it opens its mouth, it rec uh, it's recognizable by its tapered snout and black spots against its white back. Some theorize that it uh, evolved its long tongue to snatch uh, prey drawn to high blooming flowers, but others point out that no uh, infant specimens have ever been seen, suggesting a radically different uh, biological branch. Uh, I mean, all the, the young bulb orbs are just bread bugs, and there's no bread bugs in this game. So the bread bugs never saw the whip tongue bulb orb, and they couldn't adapt. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. Uh, but it would make sense if if there was stuff. So it has only recently been classified as part of the grub dog family. Pat the tongue dry, then coat all sides with a, with a spicy dry rub of your choice. Grill over high heat until the outside is perfectly crisped. Male she rub. This specimen is a male shearub. Having uh, lost both legs and wings, the male, bur male burrows into the soil and waits to ambush small creatures that pass by. This beast's mandibles can be dangerous, making creatures such as Pikmin easy prey. <laughs> Spread several specimens in, uh, in the bottom of a casserole dish and layer with sliced avocado. Uh, bake until the meat uh, is choice and the cheese is ludicrously browned. You know, something I want to point out is that all the, some of these things exist in this game that you get in the game, like the lemons and the avocados and stuff like that, but they don't call them that. But mm, I, the only thing I can assume is that they're just not even remotely similar to the stuff that they have on their home planet, so they like, call them that, like, when you when you bake them, but you know what you're talking about. But, like, it's just weird. <laughs> Yellow spectrolids. Uh, the primary uh, morphological difference from other spectrolids is the eye-like spot on its hind wings. Uh, when crossbred, with red spectralids, the offspring has a 25% chance of inheriting these spots on orange-colored wings. Uh, would this count as a new subspecies? Yo? Am I finally gonna be able to use my knowledge of the Punnett Square? From science class? For a tasty appetizer, dip wings into a batter and fry. Can also be used to season stews and soups. Remember to first remove its bitter innards. Uh, swarming sheer grub. Uh, mandiblard. We have a new mandiblard. <laughs> In contrast to the more common variety of mandiblards, it's, uh, it spends its entire life above ground without ever going below the surface. It hunts for food and pecks, preferring to feed on nectar and fruit. Uh, fruit juice, since its jaws are too weak to capture prey. It grows quickly after, uh, it grows quickly after feeding, but has difficulty moving its larger size. At its larger size. Boil and swallow whole. You want to swallow thi this whole thing whole? Like, this thing's big for you. That's okay. Uh, boil and swallow whole. The real uh, gas gastronomic joy of this creature is how smooth it goes down. If you say so, Louis. <laughs> Armored cannon larva. A specimen of lith uh, lithopod larva. This is a specimen of lithopod larva. Uh, this expedition was unable to confirm the existence of any mature lithopods, leading to concerns that the species was ex uh, was extinct on this planet. But the discovery of a uh, discovery of the uh, of the creature in larval form uh, uh, eased such concerns. Lithopods, like flint beetles, use internal meta bacteria uh, to acid chemical digestion. Uh, these meta metabacteria can only survive in certain environments, such as within the body of certain insects, so lithopod larvae do not contain any metabacteria immediately after hatching. Larvae feed 
on a partially digested or uh, regurgitated by mature lithopods, ensuring uh, the larvae obtain metabacteria uh, they would not normally have acquired. Carefully remove every grain of sand, peel back the exoskeleton, and slurp heartily, or deep fry it too. Sand belching mere slug. Gastropyudae Take your time, my dyslexic son. I mean, how far are we? Uh, we're, we're two, two and a half rows down. So we're getting there. And we only got another... Three and a half to go. Uh... Mere slug family. This giant... A giant limbless invertebrate has a distinctive large orifice. It sets a cone-shaped trap in its sandy lair and uh, waits for prey to fall into it. The main uh, orifice serves as both mouth and anus. When it inhales sand, the grains go through its intestinal ca uh, canal and come out polished and hardened uh, when they are ejected. It's sensitive to sound and vibration. The best time to catch it off guard is when it jumps out from the sand after being startled. <laughs> yeah, all of Olimar's notes are, are supposed to be scientific notes, like in Pikmin 2, but like... <laughs> I mean, you missed it earlier. Uh, but, uh, he mentioned the, the bearded amphrats, uh, do breastfeeding to their young, which makes sense, because they're animals, they do that. <laughs> but the, I, I just want to read the fact that the main orifice serves as both mouth and anus. <laughs> I mean, also, Louis said he wanted to, to bake another enemy with, like, beer. Like, use beer as, like, a, a thing to cook one of the, one of the other enemies I read earlier. So, like... <laughs> I'm just- I'm just taken back by all these words in my Nintendo video game. <laughs> Inhales sand, the grains go through its intestinal canal and come out polished. <laughs> so it just eats the sand and spits out sand balls. So it's- it like shits out its mouth. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it anymore. Uh, these are crowd pleasers. Soak overnight to remove remaining sand. Slice clean meat into thick pieces and place on grill. Then apply a generous coating of barbecue sauce and cook until sticky and crispy. Orange Bulborb, Grub Dog Family. This Bulborb species boasts a garnish color pattern with deep orange, uh, with deep orange body and black spots. The orange Bulborb's yellow, uh, bloodshot eyes. Uh, make it clear that this bulb orb is excessively edgy and high-strung, making it easier to wake from deep sleep uh, uh, than other species of the grub dog family. This bulb orb's meaty flanks uh, make for uh, deliciously savory steaks that shouldn't be missed. Flighty joust mite! Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go to the regular joust mite and read that first, because that's down here. That's down here. <laughs> Joust might. Uh, try the, the reverse uh, Buronit family. They are in the Buronit family. I mean, the, it makes sense that they look like Buronits. They have the same kind of shells. So that's cool. Uh, we have more uh, Buronit relatives. Uh, others within this family wear their shells uh, on their bellies. But this one's... Uh, shell functions more like a helmet. Uh, its wings have atrophied into uh, uselessness, so instead it burrows beneath the ground and pops out only to pierce prey with its needle-like proboscis and drain their body fluids. Uh, larval joust mites remain underground for years or even decades in some cases. To create an uh, elegant canopy, I guess can I, I guess that would be it or something like that. With explosive flavor, remove shell and sear meat on both sides. Top with a dab of pesto. Flighty Jowsonite. Uh, it's a close relative to the original burrow knit species. 
but this variety of joust might still ha uh, has the use of its wings. Oddly, uh, it still makes its habitat below ground and employs the same tactics of lying in wait before emerging to strike the emerging to strike. The helmet protecting its head is functionally uh, hard as steel due to the waxy uh, secretions in its pores, which absorb and redirect any shocks it sustains. Remove the shell and roast over a low flame, then grind meat. Whisk paste into olive oil uh, until emulsified. An extra dash of cumin. Cumin? Is that cumin? I think that's cumin. I know what that word is because I watched Drake and Josh, and the Drake and Josh's dad was allergic to cumin. But I'm going to say it's cumin. Uh, lends some uh, earth, uh, earth and earthiness to this spicy salad dressing. <coughs> Iridescent flint beetle. Flint beetle family. <laughs> Where is the door hole? <laughs> That's not even the right episode. Flint beetles are nocturnal, choosing to hide in, uh, in the grass day and uh, by day and stay active at night. These creatures keep uh, undigested food pellets in their stomachs Onto, uh, to sustain them uh, through winter, uh, but given the right uh, stimulus, uh, they will spit them out. Uh, recent research has revealed that these pellets are enveloped in a membrane that seals and preserves them in a sterile, airtight environment. If kept at room temperature, uh, it seems that this pellet membrane uh, will keep its contents fresh for up to six months. The membrane may be made of the same substance that gives the exoskeleton of the flint beetle its beautiful sheen. This specimen is a, a subspecies of the previously documented species, uh, recognizable by the variant pattern on its back. <laughs> so th is that saying that that's the reason why it looks different in this game? I mean, are these the same entries that were, that were in Pikmin 2? I don't remember all of Pikmin 2's entries. It's literally been years since I read that, so... Mm -hmm. An essential flavor, uh... Accenting ingredient in gumbo and jambalaya. Also delicious in soups, broths, and marinades. This specific one? I don't know. Maybe. Puffy Blowhog. Sus inflata. Or inflata. Sus. This species of Blowhog uses internally generated hydrogen to inflate a uh, flotation. There's the, there's the bladder. There's bladder. We got more words. Flotation bladder. Actually, wasn't, didn't Alf say that? Someone said something about bladder earlier in the game. I remember that. A flotation bl uh, bladder and hover above the ground. Uh, the creature's electrified uh, pulse uh, creates a sash of color that flows along the surface of its body, making it particularly beautiful a, a particularly beautiful blowhog species. Uh, precisely how it is able to externally uh, stabilize its highly explosive, highly explosive hydrogen and simultaneously generate electricity remains a mystery. I mean... I didn't know it generates electricity, but sure. Um, uh, that's a, a similar one. He does mention that the stuff, like... I mean, does it end with the word six months? No. It's just, like, it's a retelling of the same thing, pretty much. Uh... The puffy blowhog blows leaves and grass around to eat the insects underneath. Uh, it maintains midair buoyancy by using its fins and releasing air through blowholes. Uh, this enables it to float effortlessly, even in the breeze. In times of danger, the puffy blowhog can de uh, decompress its flotation bladder for a rapid escape from predators. Slice this creature's uh, feathered light skin into triangles. Deep fry until crispy and salt generously. Make the perfect scooping chip to accompany a fresh accompany fresh mango salsa. 
You want to cook the puffy blowhog into potato chips that aren't made from potatoes, just blowhog chips? I. Arachnode. Calvo. <laughs> Arachnid. Arachnid family. That's a new species. This spider like creature has distinctive yellow stripes on its back. Uh, carapace. It spins webs uh, in high traffic area areas and waits uh, for prey to blunder into them. Unlike its relatives in the Arachnorb and Dweevil families. He mentions Dweevils. He mentions Dweevils in the game. That's neat. Uh, it's ambisexual and has eight legs. Uh, some theorize that it's... Uh, uh, nan Nandrai uh, is meant to uh, aid in reproduction uh, through the course through, although of course it cannot reproduce on its own. There is another theory that this species is in fact two organisms of op uh, opposing genders stuck together. But since no one has ever found a four-legged, single-sexed spe specimen, this remains speculative. Pluck off the legs, crack open, and savor the meat inside. Dip them in soy sauce first for a nice mix of sweet and salty. <laughs> Burrowing Snagrit. Please mention the Snarrow, I dare you. Uh, the ma uh, majority of Snagrit's uh, species, spe yeah, species lie in wait to ambush and capture prey. With a body type perfectly adapted to such sudden strikes, it violently attacks uh, small uh, surface-dwelling insects disturbed, uh, distributed across a relatively wide range. Subspecies of Snagrit uh, suited for the varying soil uh, conditions have emerged, making the Snagrit the most geographically represented species besides the Bulborb. Visually uh, resembling the burrowing snaggart is the burrowing snarrow. That was a joke, Olimar. <laughs> when are we gonna see the burrowing snarrow? <laughs> the range of which particularly overlaps with the uh, snaggart's range. While the two may appear similar when pulled from the ground, they can be uh, distinguished by the uh, presence or absence of tail and wing markings. The only instance of the Burrowing Snarrow we've ever seen is in a fan game. It's been Pikmin 251. You fight Burrowing Snarrows in that game and not Burrowing Snaggerts, which are literally just retextured Burrowing Snaggerts that have more health. So. <laughs> I, I like the I like the callbacks to, uh, to old stuff, but like, I don't know why he mentioned the Snarrow and we haven't seen one yet. I would like to see a Burrowing Snarrow in like official Nintendo lore. Slice the serpentine torso into thin, uh, um, melodins, skewer on a metal rod with hokotate hoko onions, and barbecue over an open flame. See, so this is why I went live early today. I've been reading this for about, like, 40 minutes, and, like, we're, like, halfway done. Scoronet. Sprugus Advisus. Hunting hunt and Peck family. These highly social insects always travel in groups. Each of them has a unique role in the colony. Uh, this uh, this type is a small uh, is small is a small though still adult worker female. Rather than laying eggs, they spend their lives carrying out the queen's will, in response to their queen's sonic commands. They move in unison, as if they were a single entity. To, uh, to see them dance through the air is a sight to behold, but don't look too long. Their stingers are still deadly. Roast over a low fire until golden brown. Add a pinch of salt and uh, set out as an appetizer, or perhaps as a simple aromic centerpiece. <laughs> Scoring it, maestro. Uh, Sporeclus ad 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 Venus. Known for its striking lyriform mouth, it does not settle at a particular nest, but migrates across the waters in search for food. In the spring, uh, the maestro awakens from its hibernation. Before the advent of summer, 
she travels with a male partner to the cooler climate of the Mandiblar, um, mainland. I was gonna say Mandiblar, that's not the right word. That, it looked similar in my eyes. Of the mainland, where food is plentiful, the male is smaller, smaller than the maestro, with a white body and blue feet, uh, back and tendrils. Has no, it has no wings, and thus cannot fly. Well, thanks for showing us. The maestro secretes a pheromone to control workers to carry out its commands, which it uh, uh, issues via compl stop. complex uh, musical cues. When the maestro is no more, uh, the list, yeah, listless and directionless workers perish along with the rest of the colony. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why they all die at the end of the fight. Like. They don't know what to do anymore since their queen is dead, and they just all fucking die. <laughs> Slice thin, fry until golden brown, and serve when cool. Sprinkle the crumbs, uh, crumbs on top of a creamy, uh, clam ch uh, chowder to give it a little kick. Maestro is my favorite boss in terms of design. Same. I really like this boss. Twilight River is still my favorite area in the game. And then I think Tropical Wilds, and then Garden of Hope, and then Distant Tundra. Uh, excluding Formidable Oak. That's somewhere in the middle, or maybe near the end, I don't know. Spottlefish! Uh, uh, Squidler. Squidler? Squidler family. Achieving a translucent look without, uh, irid Iridifers and featuring two tentacles instead of ten are the signature characteristic of the Squardler family. Uh, its rad uh, radial fins resembling the petals of a flower lend a certain beauty as it swims, making it a popular uh, ornamental pet. Uh, it can heal light uh, aber aberrations and cuts via photosynthesis uh, through uh, its symbiosis with zoosynthelia. Uh, so if you uh, engage it, be sure to finish the job. Goldfish Part 2. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Drain ink and uh, reduce uh, over stove top until thick and uh, ar aromatic. Add meat, simmer uh, in the ink sauce until tender. So good, you'll have to go back for seconds. Uh, puckering blino. Narlingus uh, piscalium. Ellipse family. Many assume it's underdeveloped due to the large eyes and lack of fins, but this is simply normal. Fully grown form. Uh, it's it's simply... It's... it's normal fully grown form though uh its dorsal and ventral fins have atrophied atrophied something like that uh the long caudal fin helps it to compensate for this it can leap high enough out of water to catch low flying prey the scales uh composing uh the round patches along the sides are known to turn light pink during breeding season Reading season. Slice raw and serve as sashimi. Uh, the marbled fat gives this dish a deep unami flavor. Wattlepuss. Uh, I, I'm just not even gonna bother pronouncing that. A flobber. Flobber family. Flobber. Its eyes and, and stubby feet make it look like an octopus, hence the name. But it's uh, closer in anatomy to a starfish. Uh, it's nocturnal and sleeps by day, but stays alert for approaching predators, which it drives off by puffing itself up and releasing bubbles. Closer research suggests that the true purpose for the bubbles is to protect its eggs during spawning season. My nemesis, Wilson the Waddlepuss. I love- I want a Waddlepuss. You know what? No. I want a Waddlepuss toy that is like this. This little squishy inkling I have that, th that does this. Oh, it's like leaking. This thing's like four years old. 
it still leaks its fluids on me when I try and do that to it. But I want a Waddle Puss plush, or not plush. I want a Waddle Puss toy that does that. Uh, perfect for make uh, make ahead meals. Marinate the boiled meat in uh, balsamic vinegar and chill for a few hours. The longer you let it sit, the richer the flavor. <laughs> it leaks its fluids. <sighs> I mean, like the only Pikmin merch we have are like plush toys of uh, the Pikmin several times, uh, Olimar and Louie, and a Bulborb. So. I, and like we have like official figures, like uh, like these, which are very tiny. And I have a, a red Pikmin, and I have uh, a blue Pikmin. We still don't have official merchandise of the Copaites or like anything else. And we and we and most importantly, yes, we don't have any toys of a bread bug. Actually, wait, we might hold on. There are some like figures. I want to see that. Um. Pikmin bread bug figure. I could have sworn I've seen one. Yeah, it is. A, there is an official toy of a bread bug. I could pull this up. It's a. It's this. Oh, this is what it looks like. Um. There is official. I'm pretty sure this is an official toy. Uh, there are like official. If I just type. Uh, official Pikmin figures. Uh, it's these. Uh, these are like... No, I don't want to have that open. Uh, close that. I just want to open image a new tab. Like, we have all of these. These are like official Pikmin 2 figures. Um, and they're really freaking cool, but also really freaking expensive. Uh, and there's a lot of enemy variety here and stuff like that. And a lot of Pikmin and stuff. But like, this is literally all we've got. Uh, like, open image, a new tab. And these are, like, maybe, I think, like, Japan only. And, like, they've never been resold anywhere. Um, and then we've also got the Pic the Olimar and Pikmin Amiibos. But, like, this stuff is really freaking cool and I want it. And also the e-reader cards, I guess. Um, if you want to see a video on this stuff, go watch Jimble. I really like Jimble. Jimble's a cool dude. We're friends. Uh, he is literally the, Pic the Pikmin man. Uh, he is, like, Pikmin super fan, has a bunch of Pikmin merch, like, official shirts that were, like, Japan only. Uh, he has, uh, these Olimar and Louis. They go for, like, hundreds and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's good stuff. Anyway, uh, back to the video game. <laughs> uh, yes, I read this. Uh, Toadie Bloister. This species of creature has yet to fully evolve from shelled mollusk to the more ad advanced bloister. Uh, compared to the bloister, this creature is uh, substantially, sm substantially, substantially smaller. Is that the video? What is this? Oh yeah, that's right. There's also official uh, the e-reader. Like all, I really want the stuff. As a small side tangent, there's like a e-reader support for Pikmin 2 for e-reader cards that were only in Japan. And um, there's like music exclusively to that, which are literally just like you play them on the G you play these mini games on the GBA. Again, Jimble has a video on that. If you just look up like Jimble Pikmin e-reader, the video will pop up. It's a really cool video. I suggest watching it. Um, there's exclusive music to that, which is pretty much just like GBA versions of Pikmin 2 overworld themes and stuff like that. So, anyway, uh, the fact that its mandibles do not uh, protrude as significantly as the raging, right? That, is that spelt wrong? Hold on. I've always said raging bloister. Pikmin 2. No, I guess that is that that is how you say it. All right, I've just been I've just been stupid. I've always said raging bloister, but that is how you say it. If you say it is raging, it doesn't look right for some reason. 
I mean, I'm stupid and dyslexic and bad, so... Again, just see... I know these words, but, like, seeing them out... Like, seeing the word and reading it aloud, it does not look correct because I've, like, never seen these words, like, written out before. Uh, sick... Uh, let's read that again. The fact that its mandibles do not protrude as significantly as the raging oysters uh, is due part, uh, due in part to the fact that it's uh, like most mollusks, mollusks. Its vital organs are located deep within the creature's carapace. Uh, the flower-like appendage on its back uh, is actually a gill. Uh, it prefers a watery habitat from which it can capture unsuspecting small prey with its sticky tendrils. I really like the upgrade that the toady that the uh, the toady bloister got in this game with its tongue, because before it would just like come out. Uh, now it's just like all weird looking. Like I want to showcase this if you haven't already been looking, but like look at the thing's tongue. It like all sticks out and it's all cool looking. <laughs> Pants here with herb with herbs and oil until lightly crusted. On the, outs uh, on the outside, and rosy on the inside. Complement the savory flavors with a light and buttery cream sauce. <laughs> Bug eyed cromad. Uh, uh, like uh, its close cousin, the hermit cromad, it makes its home in a burrow rather than a shell. It has abnormally overdeveloped eyes. Uh, with which to detect prey in cloudy water or low visibility mud. Uh, these enormous eyes can perceive circular polarized light as well as the ultraviolet and infrared spectrum. It is well protected from predators, allowing it to live for uh, upwards to 50 years and grow into in to immense size by repeated asis. Do I have all samples? I don't know what that means. Also, since he's here, I'm gonna actually read uh, the Hermit Cromad, wherever he is. Am I stupid? Yes. Actually, no, yeah, her I'm gonna read Hermit Cromad, and then I'm gonna read Wogpole, because uh, Wogpole should have been read a while ago. I also do Arist Aristocrab as well. <laughs> Hermit Cromad. Uh, looking for. Actually, wait, did I read Louis? Am I stupid? Hold on. I didn't read Louis. When grilled, uh, serves as an excellent filling for an offbeat po' boy. Uh, if you have any leftover, add it to a liver paste to deepen the flavor. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, her cromad. Uh, looking at the creatures, uh, looking at the eyes and sickle-shaped legs, uh, char characteristic of schoolies, uh, one would think, uh, this is a squillia, uh, yeah, squillia relative. In fact, is a relative of the hermit crab. This species, however, has migrated uh, from seaside, uh, seaside life in a shell, and instead inhabits burrows on in the ground. While its legs appear sickle-like, they appear uh, they are pincers. Uh, are pincers it uses to snap at its prey. It prefers to feed on small creatures that pass by its lair, dragging them inside to eat them. <laughs> yeah, these are just placeholder things. I have 55 out of 55. Frickin... Uh, shook from the shell, uh, bake on high heat until uh, crispy, then dip in a pot of melted milk chocolate, lip smacking sweet. Yo, chocolate crab? I don't like- I don't like seafood, so I probably wouldn't eat that, but, you know. Alright, then we're gonna do- Also, I probably should have done Dwarf Orange Bulb Orb a long time ago, <laughs> as well. Uh, I'll do all these ones at the bottom now, and then we'll go, uh, till the end. First, let me get this. Yeah, mm, what am I even doing here? No, I'm gonna read this stuff that I should have read a while ago. Dwarf orange bulborb, bread bug family. Just as dwarf red bulborbs mimic the appearance of normal bulborbs, it was theorized that an orange bulborb mimicking variant must also exist. Recent fieldwork has confirmed this theory. Although difficult to prepare, this exquisite creature is more uh, than worth the effort. Great in fajitas. 
Shearwig. Uh, unusual for their genus, flying mandiblards have retained their wings. However, uh, only the adult males of this species can fly. Females of the species must spend most of their lifespan underground. They do, they do emerge for a period after uh, maturation uh, to spawn, uh, but they never metam metamorphose. Uh, write this beast into a zest and whisk, uh, with sugar, cream, and chopped, uh, dark chocolate, oh, chocolate bugs, for a, uh, deliciously, uh, indulgent mousse, uh, that's a true culinary coup de gras. Uh, and then we're gonna do Wogpole. The Wallywog spawns uh, in, near, uh, in early spring, laying its eggs on low-hanging tree branches and shrubs growing in or near lake, lakes and ponds. Such uh, unorthodox amphibious behavior is a defense mechanism, protecting the eggs from uh, predation by blue pikmin and water dumples. The Wallywog's wild hopping uh, near the shoreline in the early spring is thought to be a method of driving predators away from the wogpole eggs. Wogpoles can be eaten raw, uh, but they're much more flavorful when steamed or grilled. Also heavily in riso uh, risotto? Uh, feel free to experiment with this lush ingredient. Uh, and then... Just do all the water enemies, I guess. <laughs> uh... Water Dumple, Grub Dog Family. It's also interesting. It still says Grub Dog Family that this is part of the same family as bulb as uh, adult Bulborbs. Uh, a resident of freshwater pools and marshes, this aquatic creature regularly feeds on insects that land on the surface of the water. It shares a nearly identical skeletal structure with the uh, with its close relative and terrestrial cousin, the Bulborb. This may offer clues to its evolutionary origin and suggests that it only recently immigrated uh, to an aquatic habitat. Uh, what am I reading here? No, dude, you're just being stupid. These are placeholders. These are literally placeholders. It says literally above my head, 55 out of 55. I have all of the entries. This is everything in the game. That being said, I kind of wish there were some other entries for, like, pellet poses and stuff like that that were in Pikmin 2. Uh, but there are no entries for that. So that sucks. Uh, did I read this? Deep fry dumples without batter for uh, all of the flavor with half the fat. I'm gonna do Skeeter Skate. Uh, Juridus Calvomiglas, uh, Spitter Spatter family. <laughs> It skates on water at high speeds, uh, thanks to uh, tiny, thanks to the tiny hairs on the tips of its feet. These hairs are coated in an ultra hydrophobic substance to minimize friction against the water's surface. Uh, its long proboscis uh, functions as a straw to take in water, which is stored in a reservoir in its head, as well as to spout uh, sp uh, spout it as a weapon against small insects. While taking in taking in water, it also takes in microscopic plankton, meaning that its prime uh, its prime means of defense is also a feeding mechanism. The excrements uh, no excrementes cannot be used for food, uh, but you can drink the the liquid inside for a stimulating word. Uh, and then we'll do Watery Blowhog. Uh, a variant a subspecies of the Fiery Blowhog, the Watery Blowhog lacks several of the dominant genes necessary for the production of fire producing, uh, the, uh, fire producing catalysts, and thus expels jets of non-flammable liquid. This substance appears to have only recently evolved, however, the, uh, hereditary traits of this variant are dominant and highly uh, robust, so its population is rapidly increasing. 
Are, are you sure its population is rapidly increasing? Because the only version of the watery blowhog in the game is in the formidable oak, and those aren't even real. They're just versions of the plasm wraith that are disguised because they di they disappear into plasm when you kill them. So that isn't even a real blowhog. But if you say so, apparently their population is rapidly increasing. This beast's uh, unrivaled moistness gives it a melt-in-the-mouth quality that's uh, incomparable. Uh, and now... I think that's all the water enemies of the peckish aristocrat. Uh, brain cheese cereal, onion shell family. Uh, it's unnaturally large claws. A claw is used for catching prey for self, uh, catching prey for self-defense, and most surprisingly, for its mating call. Most aspects of the crab uh, life uh, revolve around it, which may explain why the crab becomes fearful and docile when its claws damaged. It would also uh, account. Uh, for the claw's remarkable regenerative ca uh, capabilities, which can restore it completely in a single night. It is also unknown to blow bubbles when under attack, but this is a result of it venting from the wrong... venting from the wrong discharge valve when under extreme stress. <laughs> so it's just like... It's like pooping bubbles. It doesn't mean to, but it just kind of does. Also, I do want to point out, I always mistake it. The, the little yellow spots near its mouth are not the uh, the eyes. The eyes are up at the top. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure those little things at the top are the eyes. I, I want to say. I don't remember, but I think so. Uh, great for hot pot night. <laughs> Again. Or not night, but great for hot pot. <laughs> Remove the shell and cook legs in uh, the hot broth. Uh, when they turn nice and red, pull them out and slather in uh, liver paste before eating. <laughs> uh, Alright, now I'm going to go back up here. Quaggled Myerclops. Uh, Triceropod Gigahium. Myerclops family. Her rule of thumb is that the larger a creature is, the more uh, it must consume to support its body weight. The Quaggled Myerclops is no exception. It uses its root-like legs to drain uh, its environments, uh, env environs of nutrients uh, to the point that uh, puncturing it could improve the entire surrounding area's ecosystem. It also catches small insects uh, using a hidden tongue in the wide mouth found uh, all, around, all about its circumference. Uh, what prey it manages to catch, it dissolves uh, to uh, their base compounds, such as nitrogen, uh, phosphoric acid, and potassium. Its insides are fertile ground for a wide variety of plants, uh, including sleeping beauty and dusty du sleeping beauty and dusty mushrooms. Uh, some theorize uh, that the fruit-like growth atop the main body. Uh, is in itself a parasitic species, uh, living off the nutrients it drains uh, from the Myerclops' enormous body. A fruit so sweet it could be uh, a dessert unto itself. Remove and discard peel and core. Slice fruit into small pieces and enjoy. <laughs> ah yes, red spectralin. We're almost done. Uh, its red wing wings have several spots, unlike the lone spot on each wing of the yellow variety. Its scales contain trace amounts of ultra-spicy flakes, which are mixed into its saliva, and it sucks up the nectar from flowers. The combined flakes, saliva, and nectar are refined into ultra-spicy nectar inside the creature, which it uses as a, a growth supplement for its eggs. Despite this, despite this, its reproductive capabilities are quite low. Uh, it is uh, for this reason that the red uh, variant fetches astronomical prices among collectors. Spread larva on a slice of toast for a toothsome and protein-packed breakfast, or fry up the wings at any time of the day for a crunchy snack. Oh god, I've been going for so long, it's over an hour. I've been reading this for over an hour. Oh, but we're almost there. 
Ugh. Uh, next. Shaggy Longlegs. Arachnorb family, whatever that other stuff means. Uh, thick hair grows on its spherical center as well as its joints. One would think there is, uh, it's there for protection, but it's a simple matter to pluck uh, the hairs out. Several coloration variants have been uh, cited, most likely due to regional characteristics, uh, rather than stress or advantage age or advanced age. They normally sit docile above trees, but will descend to scare off intruders with loud footfa uh, footfalls. <laughs> Caution, do not eat. Thanks, Louie. Uh, technically, this is merely a shaggy longlegs that has lost its hair, but since the hair never grows back, this is considered a separate species and classified under its own name. It has similarities to the beady longlegs, but it doesn't uh, secrete wax from its exoskeleton, and thus lacks its cousin's unique patterning. Uh, the absence of wax also allows small insects to climb its legs without slipping. Neat. Uh, its central orb splits horizontally, but researchers have yet to determine the significance of this difference. <laughs> oh yeah, I, n I never really paid attention to that, but yeah, these long legs open up differently than the other long legs. Not as tasty as it looks, completely inedible. Fair enough. And then we've got Calcified Crush Blat. Uh, Durotesta Longrusus. Originally, these creatures were water based mollusks. Their hard shell let them live on land by keeping its soft flesh from being exposed to predators. It absorbs nutrients from the water uh, through its skin, which is a rel relatively inefficient way of feeding uh, compared to hunting. Uh, as a result, it spends most of its time, uh, sed <laughs> sedentary due to uh, its low metabolism. The crystal shell on its back is made of silica uh, that is that it absorbs. The shells shed by younger crush blats you uh, find uh, use as projectiles for the scutter chucks. So yeah, those those are the rock the rocks that scutter chucks use are just crushed blat larva. <laughs> that was established in the scutter chuck entry, uh, but it's neat. This beast's bouncy texture is addictive, but it can be a choking hazard if overcooked. Saute and drizzle with brown butter uh, to draw out the nutty undertones. Uh, and we have three more, I believe. Uh, Spotty Bull Bear, uh, a mid-sized subspecies with the Grub Dog family, the Spotty Bull Bear's unique feeding habits set it apart from other Grub Dogs. The Spotty Bull Bear patrols a set path searching for prey, instead of passively feeding on creatures that wander into a limited territorial range. When entering Bull Bear habitats, uh, it is wi wise to proceed with extreme caution until the Bull Bear's patrol path can be clearly identified. For an unrivaled green curry, peel away the spotty bull bear skin, pulverize the juicy innards, uh, and stew until curiously fragrant. Curiously fragrant. <laughs> Dwarf bull bear. Uh, a grub dog larva in its third stage of development. This creature's, uh... I, that, yeah, that's right. This is not a bread bug. It's, like, actually a grub dog. Uh... Scrub Dog's larva is in its third stage of development. This creature's body structure is nearing a maturation. However, unlike mature bull bears, it has yet to claim its own patrol route, and thus uh, it is dependent upon its parent for uh, guarding, per uh, guarding direction. Remove innards, stuff with sage and finely aged proscurial, and broil until golden brown, the ultimate cra uh, cra crowd pleasers. Yeah, they gave the, the bull bear some massive chapped lips in this game. It was not like that before, but I, I love the way it looks in this game because it's so gross. Uh, actually, wait, no, that's not the last. There's this one. Uh, Nectar Standafly. Uh, 
any sophistry uh, its life cycle comes in two stages first it hatches underwater where the amphibious larvae prey on tadpoles and other small small aquatic creatures after it grows large enough it takes uh, to the surface and completely changes its diet to focus on plant nectar the more nectar it feeds on the more segments uh, form on its uh, abdomen upon reaching five segments uh, it is a mature adult ready for procreation hell yeah it's straw like uh, proboscis curls upward to prevent reflux from the nectar it stores tear the meat right off the belly and eat raw the bitterness of the meat uh, really highlights the sweetness of the nectar and I believe that should be everybody and last but not least, the Plasm Wraith. Plasm Wraith. Unknown species, unknown family. Uh, this unusual life form consists of an amorphous body around a hard cubic core. The body can shift not only into different shapes, but into different substan substances. It remain, uh, reminds me very much of the Water Wraith. And at first, I wondered if it also... Uh, if it was also an ectoplasmic uh, incarnation, however, uh, however, uh, enough others have seen, uh, an, 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 I don't like this phrasing, enough others have seen and encountered it to dispel this theory. Uh, the creature living near the plasm wraith must be formed from its gelatinous substance, uh, since, uh, they all liquefy upon its death. It's not clear what purpose they serve for uh, for the wraith. It's clear, uh, currently unknown what caused the hole in its torso, or some sort of uh, some sort of manifest psychic wound. Uh, but the search for this cause may lead us down the path of unraveling the history of evolution on this planet. Despite its refreshing uh, citrus scent, the flavor of this beast is. Decidably dangerous. And that's everything. Uh, interesting to know that it's not related to the Water Wraith. I mean, I'm pretty sure Louis said for the Water Wraith. I just want to pull up uh, Louis's... If I could type Louis's notes, Water Wraith. Um. <laughs> yeah, Louis' notes says inedible, known to cause mass hysteria, followed by leg spasms and internal thunderings when you eat the water wraith. Uh, so apparently, you can eat the the plasm wraith too. <laughs> Probably not the best, even though it smells like oranges. That's good to know that the plasm wraith smells like oranges, I guess. Uh, that is all of the Piclopedia notes. I have now read uh, everything related to Alf, Brittany, Charlie, and now Olimar and Louie. When this uh, goes up on YouTube, I will be also editing in the part where I get 100% completion. As of right now, I have not gotten 100% completion. Uh, if I close the copad and go to badges uh, and rank, I have 76% done i have the rest of the mission mode stuff to do and all of bingo battle and technically i also have oh I, these didn't count <laughs> played side story with the second player and play mission mode with the second player i did these already but it didn't you have to like play the full freaking mission i think to have these count so i'm gonna have to waste a couple minutes of time doing that which i guess i'll just do that on my own so you don't have to see it on stream dismiss I'm struggling now. There we go. It's set to normal difficulty. That's lame. But also fair. This should give me the last badge. Mission cleared. Because it's defeat bosses mode with only with at least a bronze i don't know how unless you're like really new to pikmin you're getting a platinum on all of these uh there we go big game hunter 
clear all defeat bosses mission missions with at least a bronze a medal. Do I win anything? <laughs> For getting to 100%. Uh, I haven't gotten any notification or anything like that. We'll go back to the main menu. Peak mean three. Uh, options. Badges. Rank. Special class. 100%. Nah, you just... The badges are just for fun. I'll look it up real quick, just in case I'm missing something. Uh, I'm going under the assumption that this is just for doing it just because you like Pikmin 3 and not because it gives you anything. Uh, so which is unfortunate. I would have liked to unlock something from this. Uh, just getting all the badges. Uh, I mean, yeah, we got... I'll just showcase them all. I'll just actually just go here to showcase them all again. I'll even dis disable my face cam so you can see everything. Uh, this is every badge available in Pikmin 3 Deluxe and what they look like. There you go. Um, I got really nothing much else to say other than there's all the badges, I guess. Hey, uh, this is Editor Me. I'm just putting this in the video to also say thank you for watching Pikmin 3 Deluxe all the way through. Or if you were just watching this video as a standalone video to watch all the Mar and Louise notes, thank you for watching the whole hour plus long video. I want to include this section uh, because I have this stuff right here. I showed it on the stream, but I didn't actually show it in a video because I didn't include that part. But these are the uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Uh, my Nintendo rewards for those who don't have them. I just want to show them off. We have these amazing coasters such as Pikmin on a coaster and we have Pikmin on a coaster and we have a bulb orb with Alf and some Pikmin on a coaster and then specifically just a yellow and these things are not the best. I mean, they're a little bit sturdy. They're, they're, they're fine. I don't even really know what to call it other than like glorified cardboard. And I also have, uh, these Pikmin 3 Deluxe stickers. They're supposed to be stickers that go on drinking glasses, and I'm probably not gonna use them for that purpose. I don't really use a lot of stickers in my life because I just like looking at the stickers on the sticker sheet. Like, as an example, I don't have it down here with me, um, but when, like, Pokemon Black and White were first new, I think it was at, like, GameStop or something, or Toys R Us, they did, like, a promotion, you could get a free sticker book. And I got a Pokemon Black sticker book, and it has stickers of, like, all the Unova Pokemon on it and stuff. And, like, different, like, several sheets. It's like a whole massive book of stickers, and I haven't used a single one of them. Uh, and then also these are the things that came with them. There's the adverts of just, uh, ones with the, uh, the sticker and one with the, the coaster. It's just this. This is what came in them. So yeah, I just want to show those. It's cool Pikmin 3 Deluxe, uh, merchandise that exists if you have points for uh, my Nintendo that you can use. Uh, I don't really have much else to say other than, once again, thank you for watching the video. I'm going to put these back in the bag. I do want to say uh, tomorrow, when this gets uploaded, so tomorrow, uh, which should be a Sunday, uh, I'm going to be uploading one more Pikmin 3 Deluxe video. If you have not already known this yet, uh, I actually did a speed run of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. And if you go to speedrun.com right now, you can watch the run there. Uh, but it will be uploaded in full uh, on YouTube. You can also go to twitch.tv slash pokeball35, where I do stream almost every single day, and where I did stream all of Pikmin 3 Deluxe and plenty of other playthroughs as well. Uh, there should be a highlight on the Twitch page uh, in the highlights section with the clips, and the whole highlight of that is there. Uh, that's what's being hosted on um, speedrun.com. So if you want to see my speed run, it's gonna it's be it's there, and it'll also be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know anything about the speed run, I don't want to spoil what time I got or what place I got on the leaderboard. Uh, but it's really cool that I did it, and I want to do another speed run in the future. But right now, that's just not anything I have planned. I might do another one in December. I don't know. Uh, I have other stuff that I'm streaming at the moment, and don't really want to go back to Pikmin Three uh, soon. 
will be uh, Pikmin 2 on the sh on the channel with some cool stuff added to it, and I will make an announcement video announcing when I'm going to stream that. I think I've maybe already said when I'm going to stream it, prop definitely on like Twitter or something. Uh, but about a week before I do it, it will be this month, it will be this December. Uh, I will make an announcement video about one week beforehand, just to say uh, when, it's, when it's happening, what it entails. Uh, you could probably go to like one of my update, my recent update video, I think I talk about it. I don't think I said what date, but I do talk about it there. Uh, so thank you for watching Pikmin 3 Deluxe and Pikmin 3 Deluxe Ultra Spicy. And if you want to see my other Pikmin 3 playthrough that I did a couple months back, there's that you can check out and all my other Pikmin stuff. Thank you for watching. I will see you in tomorrow's video of the speedrun, and I will also see you in whatever comes next. I don't know why I try and do this, but, you know.